it had to be done. Yoshi's Legacy is more or less defined by one game, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Sure, he's made plenty of appearances in other games over the years, a bunch of them being spin-offs, but let's not fool ourselves here. Yoshi's Island is the Yoshi game. And man, this game... This game is an absolute gem, I cannot say it enough. Maybe it's the pure nostalgia talking here, but I would go as far as to say that this is damn near perfection. This is a brilliant combination of excellent music, great gameplay mechanics, a fantastic art style, and a pretty cute novel concept. I get it, Baby Mario crying is super annoying, well then just don't get hit! I mean, that, that's a pretty good motivation to not be bad at the game, I would think. In my opinion, they hit every single nail on the head so well that it must be super difficult for them to try to recapture that magic in future games, as evidenced by future games just failing at trying to do that. Apologies to the three of you out there who really adore Yoshi Topsy Turvy on Game Boy Advance. So we've already gone over the portable Yoshi's Island games, and long story short, they're not terrible, but they certainly suffer from living under the original game's shadow. They just try too hard to imitate the SNES classic. But nowadays, we have two games in this franchise that try to continue on the legacy of Yoshi's Island, while also trying to step out of the shadow at the same time. Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U, and Yoshi's Crafted World on the Switch. Good feel, secretly one of Nintendo's more consistent third-party developers. Seemingly out of nowhere with Wario Land Shake It on the Wii, this company created an identity for themselves almost immediately. If they can nail anything, it's creating an entire game based purely on an art style, tied with mechanics that just feel good. Oh, oh yeah, and, uh, and they made a handful of Street Pass games on the 3DS. Uh, why not? They actually have a pretty odd overall game lineup. I mean, who can forget Luxley's lineup for the DSi? Oh. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. After the success of Kirby's Epic Yarn, well, why not do practically the same thing with Yoshi? Twice! Both of these games are good. They're really good, so instead of doing the typical spiel of doing a solo video on each, going super in-depth into why these games are good, I'm thinking we have a bit of a grudge match. It's wool versus cardboard, yarn versus paper, Yoshi versus Yoshi. Let's do it. I think the best way to go about this is to lock it down to five different categories. Plot, egg, collectibles, cute factor, and music. The five things that every game should be graded on. Despite being the same character and both games being developed by the same company, they're actually surprisingly super different. This should be pretty interesting. Let's begin! So the story of these are one element where both games are pretty similar. In Woolly World, the Yoshi clan are just relaxing before Kamek comes out of nowhere, turns most of the little dinosaurs into bundles of yarn, and scatters them across the lands. So it's up to you to rescue them all. And then in Crafted World, it actually takes a bit of influence from Yoshi's story and the whole super happy tree, which is still, that's still just a great name? All of the Yoshis are hanging out by the Sundream Stone when, once again, Kamek comes through, this time with Bowser Jr. in tow. And after a bit of a struggle, the Sundream's gems get scattered, and now it's up to you to get them back before the bad guys get them. Bowser Jr. does show up in Woolly World as well, but he's relegated to the very end of the adventure, just like in Yoshi's Island. And yes, that is Bowser Jr., not Baby Bowser. Even New Island got this wrong. Okay, so listen, this is not Baby Bowser. This is. That is Bowser Jr. Clearly, this is something worth being angry about. And don't even get me started on the Koopa Kids from Mario Party. I don't even think Nintendo knows where they fit in. So yeah, the stories are pretty similar, but it's exactly what's needed to put a couple of colorful dinosaurs on an adventure. And I can certainly get down with that a whole lot more than, oh, we dropped baby Mario. Again. It's pretty close, but I'm gonna go ahead and give the notch to Woolly World, just because I'm pretty surprised at how incredibly violent it is. There may not be blood or anything like that, but the Yoshis literally get chopped up into pieces, and then they have this little happy face slapped onto them. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty messed up. Point Woolly. Next up, Egg. Okay, look, I can explain. 
what I want to talk about here is actually the gameplay mechanics, aka the tried and true egg mechanic that Yoshi has been using for years. Both games are structured in a pretty similar way. You travel from point A to point B in side-scrolling levels that are filled to the brim with obstacles that are meant to be taken out by taking these eggs, or in Wooly World's case, yarn balls, and throwing them wherever you see fit. Wooly follows Island's approach by once again using the rotating reticle, and I love this mechanic just as much as I did in that original game. But for as much as I do really enjoy using it, I know others just never got behind it. Fair enough, you know you gotta be pretty good at angles if you wanna get a precise shot. And hey, you gotta remember, this game released on the Wii U. As a result, you can use the Wii Remote. And using that option, you now have the ability to tilt where you want the egg to go, which made things an absolute breeze. There are many times throughout the adventure where precision is damn near a necessity, and I love this extra level of control. Now, Crafted World, on the other hand, actually feels really similar to the N64's Yoshi Story, another similarity there. You see, in that game, you had absolute control over your throw. You can pinpoint where exactly you want it to go, and it'll go there. That is the same exact thing here. But it's not just a cute throwback, it's actually built around the game's worlds having objects in the foreground and background that contain some coins or even some secrets. And sure, in relation, it does make the act of getting the egg from your hand to the desired target take a longer amount of time, but the sheer curiosity of keeping on the lookout for objects in 3D space in a 2D platformer was consistently really, really cool. The game often plays with the camera as well, placing items about with the sole intention of hiding special things behind them. It's just, man, it, it's really neat. And actually, you know what this reminds me of? Kirby 64 and Klonoa, 2D platformers that consistently rotated the camera. And okay, we don't get camera rotations to the same level as that, but what we have now is another major 2D platformer that gives off the vibe of playing in a 3D world. And that is absolutely awesome. And between both of these games, all of this was accomplished with no crying babies in sight. Very nice. Wooly World is fun, really fun, don't get me wrong, but the point has to go to Crafted World for the originality alone. And aside from just the egg throwing mechanics, the games do share a few similar concepts, like having these dedicated segments that completely change up the play control. Each game does handle things slightly differently, but it's the same core idea, and they both handle them just fine. Wooly World has these transformation segments within levels as a means to collect more items, while Crafted World more so leans to having individual levels that are based on these vehicles. They offer up some of the strongest challenges in the entire adventure. They're all score based, and oh man, getting getting a perfect score is is absolute hell. And I especially love the Go Go Yoshi. Look how ugly it is. It's adorable. But alrighty, next up we're looking at collectibles. Yoshi games usually offer a bunch in their levels, and these games are no different. Flowers, red coins, maintaining perfect health, both games more or less go for the same thing. Yeah, Wooly World goes for beads instead of coins because it just came after Epic Yarn, why not rip that game off a little bit? That's all visual, they're the same thing. It's pretty neat too, actually. Hidden within each level amongst the beads are these patches that are used to create stamps. Oh boy, I can't wait to post this on Miiverse. It doesn't matter how long it's been. It still hurts. <gasps> Easily, the best collectible in Wooly World has to be the yarn bundles. You collect all five in a level and then you unlock a brand new Yoshi design. Yeah, this is, this is clearly the best. Sorry, Miiverse stamps. All of the major items in both games are rewards for a ridiculous amount of exploration. Like, your best bet is to touch every single wall that you run across and jump where there may be nothing, as that's the only way to learn where everything is hidden. Wooly World even has the audacity to hide items in walls far too often. A bunch of the levels in the game are also these large multi-path mazes too, making full completion sometimes super annoying. At least you can purchase this equipable badge before every level to help you out, so that, that's nice. Crafted World doesn't have something similar to that badge, but to be honest, that's because the game doesn't need it. It's established right from the get-go that items will be all around you, and with levels that are built around that idea, I never really ran into that same level of frustration that Wooly World often provides. 
No, no, no. Instead, the frustration with Crafted World comes from the NPCs asking you to complete levels like five times, at least. The developers are sick in the head. So you got your initial playthrough, a likely second playthrough to clean up items that you missed out on the first time, playing a level in reverse to catch poochie pups as fast as you can, collecting just a, just a stupid amount of souvenirs that these little block dudes ask you to find one item at a time. You know, it'd be nice if they told you everything in one go, but no, I'll go get this one thing, then I'll go back and then I'll get five of this one thing because you really want to see it for some stupid reason. Then I'll go, then I'll go do this one thing. Oh, we're done. Okay, cool. Time to do it again. And just when you think you're done, there's some hide and seek stuff that pops up at the end too. It never ends. But you know, it's fine. I'm more than happy to complete this stupid, simple magnet puzzle for the sixth time. Party on everyone! What this boils down to is both games are really, really fun, but damn near torture to 100%. It's certainly easier to do in Wooly World, but that's really only because you have the option to pick up that badge. And also, it's nowhere near as padded as Crafted is, but honestly, I think I will give the point to Crafted. It all still boils down to that 3D level design, man. Sure, the replaying of levels sucks. It really, really sucks. But to me, the way that I see it, the souvenirs are purely side content, while the rest of the regular collectibles are parts of the main game. And it is much more frustrating trying to go for the regular collectibles in Wooly World. So yeah, there you go. Point crafted. Next up, cuteness. Each game here goes for their own unique sense of style, and they both utilize it really well. Wooly World doesn't use the yarn aesthetic for gameplay purposes as much as Kirby did before him, but it's still very clearly a massive world built out of fabric, and it looks fantastic. Crafted World, on the other hand, goes full-on arts and crafts project. The amount of real-life objects used to create these landscapes is incredible, and I was constantly surprised seeing how these areas were, dare I say, crafted. Ha! All right, this one, you know, I'll acknowledge is a purely subjective debate. One could definitely argue that Crafted World does a whole lot more with its style, but that would also kind of downplay just how good Wooly World looks. Both games picked a really unique art style and then ran with it to levels that you couldn't imagine. And more importantly, they both make sure to emphasize just how cute the Yoshis are. Yes, yes, that is very, very important. Wooly has dozens of different styled Yoshis to play with, while Crafted has dozens of different costumes to play in. Man, I can't, I can't decide, they're both so adorable. They both also include Poochie, which to be honest, they should both get a point for that alone. The boss battles are a bit cooler in Crafted World in my opinion. When the bosses form, there's like this stop motion effect that plays out showing them getting created from real world objects, and that's pretty awesome. Wooly World does do something similar with its style, again hearkening back to Yoshi's Island, but when directly comparing the two, yeah, Crafted does a whole lot more with the arts and crafts aesthetic. Also, you refight a bunch of the bosses in Wooly World, that, that just sucks. Ah oh man, it's it's really a tough call. I just I don't I don't really know. Oh wait, wait a minute. That's right. Wooly World is responsible for treating society to fluffy amiibo, including a gigantic Yoshi. Yep. Point Wooly. <laughs> Point Wooly. Oh boy, I mean, it was a tight race. Really, really it was. Wooly World goes for this whole, you know, good soundtrack approach with this crazy concept. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, catchy music, I think it is. Like nearly every single level has a great track to accompany it. Meanwhile, Crafted World, oh boy, I gotta hand it to them. They were, they were just so bold and daring. They decided to go with the bad soundtrack approach instead. Truly, truly remarkable. It goes for the Yoshi story idea of taking the main theme and making a ton of remixes of it, but it's just, it's just, it's just not good. No lie, when I was playing through Crafted World, I was listening to the soundtrack of Wooly World. I'm not, not even joking. And seriously, the coin slot theme, how, how did that make it into the final product? Well, alrighty then. So for those of you who are keeping track, Wooly World has three points, Crafted World has two. Both of these games are really good, I can't stress that enough. If you have the available consoles, I highly recommend you play them, but I just gotta give the edge to Wooly World. That game is something else, man. However, what if you don't have a Wii U like most of the population, but you have a 3DS? 
Well, do I have the solution for you? They named this one Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, meaning I gotta put it next to the P's in my collection instead of the Y's. Thanks, Nintendo, I hate it. Now, obviously, when comparing the games directly, it doesn't look as polished, or in Yoshi's instance, fluffy. And it does add some pretty nothing extra content with the Poochie levels, but thankfully, this port doesn't mess with the core adventure, like how the ability is messed with the port of Epic Yarn. Now, this game I understand why it got ported to the 3DS. The Switch wasn't a thing yet, the Wii U was failing terribly. Why not put an awesome 2D platformer on a console that everyone has access to? And maybe as like a way to overshadow the other 3DS Yoshi game, who knows? They also added a handful of these adorable stop-motion movies made with the amiibo. These are awesome. I'm telling you, man, with stuff like this and the Pikmin short movies, there need to be more animations with Nintendo things. And actually, did you know, you probably didn't, by using the amiibo, you can unlock extra color choices for almost every single unlockable costume. I can hear your mind-blowing explosions from here. I know, I'm such a sham. This wasn't a grudge match at all, this was totally clickbait. I know you must be totally angry with me. That's absolutely fine, I'm gonna take it upon myself to punish myself. Don't worry about it, I know just the thing. I'm gonna listen to the Crafted World soundtrack some more. Oh, oh god, it's torture. <laughs> <laughs>